morning, YouTube. It is a rocky morning for me, uh, starting around 4 a.m. with a weather alert for a flash flood. And it's not clear to me if it's safe for me to go to work or not. The news makes it seem like it's not, but I haven't really received much notification, so I'm kind of, my routine is seriously disrupted. I've, I've texted some of my colleagues and they say it's okay to just wait it out. <laughs> Um, because I don't want my car to flood. My face is washed and I have sunscreen on. Um, now I just need my, uh, scuba mask. But anyways, guys, I was just, uh, reading my, uh, journal article here in an effort to kind of, uh, calm myself down. So there are a lot of articles this month, um, in this journal about, um, kind of the public's perception of sunscreen. So SPF 15, so SPF 15 will allow about 6.7% of ultraviolet radiation from the sun to, to um, reach the skin, whereas 30 allows 3.3% and 60 allows 1.7%. So you can see that using SPF 15 sunscreen effectively all over your face it allows about twice as much ultraviolet radiation to reach your skin as SPF 30 and, um, and four times as much as SPF 60. So um, just to kind of put it in perspective, um, that's why we generally push up for on the higher, higher side of things. That and the studies show that when people put sunscreen on, they don't do it effectively to coat all the surfaces with a, a good layer um, so that's kind of the you know don't focus on 40 versus 41 versus 42 that's all kind of marketing things I think um, but do know that um, you know like if your makeup just has 15 um, I wouldn't just go on on that because you're not putting an even coat of foundation to like your ears and neck and everything for example it's great to use makeup with any SPF in it but don't neglect a base layer of a broad spectrum sunscreen and I always recommend zinc or titanium dioxide ones because they physically block the sun and they're not um, as photolabile, meaning they don't degrade with light exposure. When the SPF is calculated, it's done at a concentration applied to skin of two milligrams per centimeter squared, okay? But the studies show that the average person actually applies about, about a quarter to half of that amount. So you can imagine that. Um, you're not getting the sunscreen all over. It's really difficult. And then you should apply it 30 minutes before going outside and then two hours after being outdoors. So it's really a lot to keep up with appropriately to get the, the levels that um, it, it affords in the laboratory. But anyways, I'm gonna have my coffee and eat my breakfast and then head out. I don't know if I need sw swimmies in a scuba mask. All right guys, I'm kind of stopped here, but can you see that? That's what I was terrified of. Um, seems to be restricted to this one street here, so I think I uh, scathed it. See, what happens is you kind of have to wait for it to all trickle down into that drain over there, I guess. But Yeah, I'm glad I didn't put my uh, car through that uh, potential nightmare. I'm merely a block away. I think I've escaped the worst of it, and uh, I didn't have any difficulty getting here. Um, and. Sounds like the, uh, my excellent team is holding down the Ford. I think our patients had a similar idea. And sounds like we only have had one so far, and it's about 10.15, so. No harm, no foul with this late start. But <laughs> uh, see, everything works out. Whenever you're panicking, uh, it's 99.9% .9 likely that it's irrelevant. <laughs> Well, I say that as I'm approaching it. Okay. Work day is done, and so we have a lot more rain uh, while I was in clinic, and I'm hoping that uh, that the flooding situation on the drive back is not a problem. So, wish me luck. Well, hey guys, I made it back. No flooding issues, and um, I've got a soul cycle in the night. I think I got a question, guys, about recommending a shampoo for over 50 hair. There is no such shampoo. I mean, it, there may be some that 
that are marketed that way, but the rate at which the sebaceous glands in our, around our hair produce oil slows as we get wiser. Um, so just cut back on the amount of shampooing. And the other tip that I would give is to stop color treating your hair and to stop uh, blow drying or heat styling. Because all of these things are incredibly traumatic to the hair cuticle on the shaft. Uh, and lead to breakage and drying. The other tip um, that I personally have found to be effective, particularly when I had very long hair, is um, I never ever comb my hair when I get out of the shower, guys. I don't know if you've noticed that. I just pin it up when it's wet as is and let it air dry that way. And then in the morning, I let it fall down. Um, and then I just finger comb it out, okay? Gently finger comb any dead, dead hairs out. Um, and I found that I, I really, I don't even brush my hair, period. Now that's, that works with my particular texture of hair. Dishes here from my dishwasher. So I'm here at Soul Cycle and uh, that song uh, by the Black Beatles just came on. Um, it's kind of funny, but uh, anyways, I think I'm going to head on here. Alright guys, so I'm back from Soul Cycle and ugh, made sure to park up on the top level of my uh, apartment building here because I don't want to risk the rain coming. I spent what, like 40 minutes of my time bathing the car? Like, honestly, my shower is shorter than that. Aside from that, it's time for me to change the oil in my car, and there's this little reminder light that keeps looking at me every time I get in the car, judging me, like, are you going to change me? It's as if I have a toddler. You don't own things, they own you. Washed my makeup off in the shower, and as soon as I got out, I put on my oil-free moisturizer to my wet face, and it's now dry, so. I'm coming in with uh, my 0.1% Adapalene and Differin Gel tonight, but before I do that, um, I'm still going to do the greasing the orifices, um, like I did forget to do it last night, but I'm going to do it today, even though I didn't get any irritation, I just, I just want to follow the protocol. These are just the areas that I don't want the Adapalene to go to. Now, Adapalene is known to be less irritating than the other retinoids. Um, Adapalene is only FDA approved for acne, FYI, which is what I'm using it for. I'm just going to put it down, down here. Oh, man. Today, guys, I was just really thrown... See how I rub it in? You really don't need much. Um, today, I was really thrown for a loop when that... <laughs> shrill weather alert went off. I don't, I have no problem waking up early in the morning. I don't like mental engagement at 4 a.m. It just, um, that's probably why I'm not a surgeon, um, or a, uh, obstetrician. <laughs> um, all right, so that's done. Easy peasy. So I had a question that, uh, was interesting about, uh, this Dr. Jart sunscreen. Then they read an article I found the article um, that you're referencing via, I think, Paula's, Paula's Picks or something like that. Something, something, cell death. And here's the, the short of it. Don't worry about that. I read the article, um, and basically what they're talking about is uh, this Dr. Jart sunscreen has lavender um, oil in it, and there's one study in 2004 of cells in a dish where they dumped a bunch of it on the cells and they died. But guys, I mean... You have to be aware, there's something called in vitro, which means cells in a dish, and then in vivo, which is more, which is live. Um, and I, I'm not aware of any um, real, realistic data that shows that. Um, and that was in 2004, which for basic science is kind of like the 50s. The cell type they were using, I've actually worked with, it's called endothelial cells. These are the cells that line your blood vessels, not the cells on the top of your skin that you would be applying sunscreen to. So unless you're mainlining Dr. Jarts, don't even worry about it. Um, and then, but the second um, thing they pointed out in the article uh, that's important, guys, is uh, that this um, sunscreen has a lot of fragrance in it. Things, okay? It's made up of a mixture of molecules, and people can develop what's called an allergic contact dermatitis to those molecules, okay? It doesn't mean that those molecules are deadly or toxic or anything. This can happen to anybody. Um, one, you know, and for whatever reason, fragrance mix is a common thing. Fragrance, fragrances are a common ingredient that um, people can develop a contact allergy to. But a uh, side note, guys, speaking of fragrance, I'm totally loving this uh, Burt's Bees Mint Eucalyptus um, 
So I'm probably inhaling, I don't know, eugenol and isoeugenol as we, as we speak. So you guys know that I love Oprah, right? And I'm always like, oh, Oprah is my, uh, is my spirit animal or whatever. But, um, so I was checking the mail and of course I got nothing of interest. But, um, there's a little section over by our mailboxes where people can, you know, kind of dump stuff they don't want and it's free for the taking. And look what somebody just blanketly gave away. I'm so excited. I mean, does it get any more zen than this Oprah glamping? I'm so stoked. You guys know I love I love glamping in mini trailers. It's my new thing. Well, anyways, guys, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you had a great hump day. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.